This is the last episode of the first season of Leather Academy, in which I analyzed the various types of leather tanning. First of all, let's remember what tanning is and why it's important. Where does tanning take place? The phases essentially are these. Wet processes where we have bee mouse tanning and wet end and then finishing. I will talk about the various phases in more detail in the next season. In tanning, the collagen of the eyes is transformed into leather. Herewith is protected by microorganisms. In other words, the tanning aims to irreversibly stabilize the skin that is no longer susceptible to rot. Different tanning agents can be used. The most common are chrome, glutardialdehyde, GDA, vegetable, and today we have also two new innovative and sustainable methods that are zoology and olive and leaf. Leather tanning has a prehistoric origins and the first type of tanning was the vegetable one. The process does not differ much from the methods we know today. It is based on the use of water and a class of tanning reagents contained in the bark of various plants, such as oaks, chestnuts, and acacias, commonly called tannins. In the past, it was very slow and required that the leathers were stretched with a frame and immersed for one to three months in a solution of water and tree barks. Today, we mainly use the so-called rapid tanning in barrels, which allows us to reduce the tanning time, which is between 36 and 48 hours. The traditional tanning method for processing vegetable leather is certainly slower than other methods, but it is healthier and less impactful. Everything is recovered or recycled. The water used for tanning is recovered and used for secondary activities, while the hair extracted is used to create fertilizers. The sludge produced is collected and used in the construction industry for the production of bricks. Another ancient method is oil tanning. The best known type of oil tanning is the so-called chemi tanning for the manufacture of leather cloth, for the cleaning and washing of car bodies, glass, clothing, gloves and industrial filters. Oil leather, which is soft as cloth, is elastic and has a very low specific gravity and to obtain a soft and light tanned leather of the desired yellow color, it is necessary to use only certain fish oils which have well-defined chemical characteristics. Towards the end of the 19th century, the method chrome tanning was discovered. Mainly chromium salts or substances of mineral origin are used. This is trivalent chromium, which is not toxic to humans. As of today, 80% of the world's tanned leathers are made with chromium. It has many advantages and some of them are that it requires less time for processing. In fact, the average time of treatment is from 6 to 8 hours. It allows virtually any type of leather article to be made. The softness and the fibers subjected to this treatment show a very satisfactory elasticity and tensile strength. The biggest criticism comes from the fact that in certain extreme conditions, chromium-3 can be transformed into chromium-6, which is carcinogenic. But as I said, the conditions of preservation and processing of the leather must be extreme and I talk more about this in the dedicated video. In addition, the environmental performance of Italian tanneries that use this method has improved to the point that the environmental impact is very low. Then there is the chrome-free tanning method, also known as wet white. The development of wet white technology is due to the growing demand in the automotive sector for chrome-free products. This demand was driven by a European directive in 2000 that made the cost of vehicle disposal higher. This type of tanning has advantages because sludge disposal tends to be less impactful than chrome, but often uses synthetic tannins and glutardialdehyde, which are not good for the environment. Within the family of wet white tanned leathers, we find chrome and metal free leathers, the first without chrome and the second without chrome and metal, in particular aluminum, chrome, iron, titanium and zirconium. Finally, I add that there is an ongoing debate on who between chrome leather and chrome free is really more sustainable. 
The tanning industry is also investing in alternative and more sustainable types of tanning. And here we find tanning with olive leaves and zeology. The first sustainable tanning agent, which is under patent, is a plant concentrate based on an aqueous extract of olive leaves. The same active tanning ingredients are found in natural cosmetics and extra virgin olive oil. The production of olive leaf extract helps prevent many tons of carbon dioxide emissions since the leaves are no longer burned but collected for tanning. Thus, an added value is created in the place of origin. Time, water and energy consumption are similar to chrome-free tanning. It is a new way of vegetable tanning and is a true vegetable tanning since the synthetic pre-tanning is avoided by being replaced by the patented wet green technology. It replaces such synthetic tanning chemicals for real olive leaf tanned olive leather. This tanning agent has been awarded certifications such as Cradle to Cradle Gold and Material Health Platinum and Dermatest Very Good for a purely ecological leather treatment and associated tanning processes using only renewable raw materials. The biodegradability of wet green leather has been tested according to ISO 148551 by the Institute InnoHub as SCCP Milan, and the test report confirms the ultimate biodegradability, more than 90% biodegradation after 3 months. The other sustainable method is called Zeology, created by Nera Tanning, a brand of Smith & Zoon. Tanning with Zeology starts with modified zeolite, a combination of alumina, silica sand and oxygen. All of of these elements are abundantly present in the Earth's crust. The result of zeology tanning is called zeowhite, a skin that contains mainly collagen and zeolite. Both components are not harmful to the environment. Zeology tanned leather biodegrades faster than traditional tanning technologies. Zeowhite and the leather made with it have passed tests for both biodegradation, which means it becomes comfortable in a short time, and bioassimilation, which concerns the positive effect of the degraded product in the soil on plant growth. Zeology tanned crust leather has demonstrated up to 100% compostability after 90 days and a positive response to plant growth as a compost substrate. ISO method 2200-2015. Well, I've finished my summary. I would like to add that in any case the sustainability of leather, especially that produced in Italy, is substantially based on production processes that comply with the relevant environmental standards. Italian tanneries, whose production is concentrated almost entirely within territorial industrial poles, have for many years considered environmental protection an integral part of their productivity growth. The adoption of clean technologies, the increased use of more environmental friendly chemicals, the use of machinery with higher energy efficiency have allowed reaching adequate levels of environmental efficiency of production cycles. As far as product safety is concerned, in terms of the presence of particularly hazardous substances SVHC, Italian Finnish leather generally complies with the requirements of international standards and in particular with those regulated by REACH. This is not to say that tanneries outside of Italy are less performing and sustainable. There are excellent tanneries of equal value outside Italy as well. One piece of advice I always give to everyone in order to better understand the supplier in front of you is to ask for the certifications and maybe make a technical analysis of the material that is proposed to you.